Portland as a, as a three piece with a computer. And he was a valuable member. Yeah, that's when we decided, wow, this is way better than. I think computer. like the, when you came up to Seattle, it wasn't a plan. To there was no plan. Yeah, yeah, there was no plan of having a real drummer, so it was just like laptop and then Pete sat in. Yeah, Jack called me from his house. He was like, come on, Just jam. Jam was gonna jam. The next day, we just had Pete play with us for our shows. We had a show the next day. Yeah, this guy just was at my house every day. I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I got a guitar. No, really, what had happened? What had happened was, no, uh, our friend, uh, my uh, friend of mine, Andy, she came to that show we were talking about in Seattle. And she saw, you know, she said her boyfriend wasn't doing anything. He was done. And we were looking for a guitar player then. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I listened to his music. Soon enough, like two weeks later, and this is like February and I'm moving the next month to Seattle and I was like, so yeah, two weeks later, Hav and I are trying to look for places in Seattle. I recorded two songs just to show my friends on my space. Yeah, and people started liking them, so I started making more. And then Mike Sniper from Capture Tricks got a hold of them somehow, and then they emailed me for more. So I started working on more songs, which eventually those songs would become would become Idol Labor. The whole Idol Labor process, I didn't own any of the recording equipment, even the guitar that I was using. I didn't own equipment, and I borrowed all my friends' stuff, and they were all nice enough to let me borrow their stuff. I, I mixed the record with earbuds, like Apple earbuds, I didn't have good speakers or monitor, any of that. The whole Vital Labor was pretty much written about from the age of 18 to like 21. On certain songs, I uh, just write um, just random shit on paper and then eventually turns it like into lyrics. Somehow I fit them in and I work off a strong hook usually and then that's where it's based off of is the hook and then I build around that. You just want to keep creating stuff so that you're out of that one spot. So like me moving out to Stockton was a big deal. Most of the writing was just inspired of like really trying to get out. Like what you should close it off as a It's just like really trying to get out of your situation. And find a reach for you know happiness and then you get kind of bored again and then you try to find the happiness. Something I always did, all we did, really. Each individually, they like I said, there are bands, Javier's on band. It was like, oh fuck, we have to do this. Like, people want to hear it. Was the Catherine Tracks thing just sort of like He emailed me and it was just like, MP3's got them. I'm like, whoa, 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 dude. And you know, and like, that was the time when I was like getting into Beach Fossils and all that thing, and I was like, and I didn't know anything about labels, and I looked up the label and I was like, I saw them, and I knew Blind Dogs already. I was just like, whoa, like, they don't need me on their roster, you know? These bands that I was looking up to, and then two months later, we're touring with Beach Fossils. It's weird. They just love music. music. They're so yeah, passionate. Like we played um, next door to some like warehouse where twelve year olds was were like spinning house music. <laughs> that's true. Do yeah, you remember that? That was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Where was that? That was in Venice. That was Venice. Was that Venice? Yeah. 
I was like, the whole tour was awesome, then Germany just sucked. It was hard to find Wi-Fi. Actually, the, our first date in Germany, we showed up to the menu after driving for like, like all day. And, uh, and then we found out that we actually weren't playing that night, because there's just some booking snap. We were supposed to play the day before. Yeah, yeah, they were like, oh, your craft spells, oh, you're like a day late. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my favorite show, Stockholm, is fucking yeah. awesome. Someone I really looked up to, the singer of the Legends, was like tweeting how good we were, and I was just like, oh my god. I was really nervous. I took a like huge, like two hour nap before we played. <laughs> I woke up right before we went on. I woke up kind of like half asleep, and then I saw the crowds like, oh fuck. Someone grabbed me a line. <laughs> something of my own, but the LP is something that would be, you know, we need to try. I want to try. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Will you change your recording techniques with the LP be something that you're like, oh, well, maybe... No, they're, they're, they're going to come in my room. It's still going to be, it's still gonna be a religious experience. It's going to be right there. Good to see everyone that we like in one place.